Hey everyone, Ogre here. You know, I don't know about you, but after a hard day of slaving for my corporate overlords or learning multiple books in class or running around, I uh, tend to like to just come home, lay in my bed, relax, and do some reading. You know, something past the time before the missus gets home. And so, uh, being obsessed with RPGs, those books are usually rule books or modules. So tonight, when I uh, was looking at my bookcase, something kind of shot out at me. Hmm? I got the idea to take a look at something I hadn't looked at in a while. So tonight, I'm going to re-look at Order of the Dragon Queen and Rise of Tiamat. The first two books to come out in 2014 when Wizards of the Coast released D&D 5e. As I looked at them, the only thing I could think of was, wow, there are so many other independent or do-it-yourself D&D or OSR products that tell these kind of stories so much better. So, I'm going to talk about that. So first off, what's Horde of the Dragon Queen about? Well, Horde of the Dragon Queen is, is basically about cultists stealing stuff to make a big horde for Tiamat. They're trying to resurrect Tiamat, who's the five-headed god, dragon, demon god thing. They're, they're trying to bring Tiamat to the material plane. So they're amassing all this treasure, all these things to make a horde for Tiamat. And then the second part, Rise of Tiamat, is about all that stuff, but longer. <laughs> Sorry. Rise of Tiamat mostly focuses on gathering allies, um, beating up key leaders, and then punching Tiamat in the face. It's it's a sprawling epic that takes you all across Faroon, stop to stop, just like a railroad railroad might. It's a railroad. After after rereading it, it really hasn't aged well, in my in my opinion. And I did run it back in 2014, back when I did do Adventures League regularly. To me, it's it's very generic fantasy with no bite or personality. So yeah, made by the people at Cobalt Press who make pretty good products. I have a couple of them on my shelf. So what does it do really well? Um, I think the art's really good. I think there's a lot of commission, good commission pieces. It's, it's, it's got a lot of good like painted pictures. Like the art's very consistent and it looks, it's, it's a good looking book. It's, it's, not, it's not a bad, it's not a bad book. I mean, really, it's it's well put together, and you can you, it's a good start for people to get a taste of what an epic campaign can be, and at its core, it's pure epic fantasy. However, you can tell it was written before they had the complete rule set, because a lot of the encounters aren't super balanced, mechanically into the nitty gritty. One of the big glaring examples is the first one of the first encounters where you go through a sewer and encounter a swarm of rats, which can absolutely be devastating to a level 1 party, as I found out, having run it. And there's nothing more demeaning when a level 1 party of 4 is killed by a swarm of rats. I'm sure that when they wrote it, they were given not all the information, and so they weren't kind of sure of the expectations that, that were needed for this kind of adventure, or the game itself. So not only did they have to write it probably with an incomplete rule set, but they also had to write it as the first first official thing that Rizzo of the Coast released. And on top of that, they had to make it so that you could play them within two to four hours for the Adventures League they were starting. You know, so considering all the walls that were probably put up in front of them before making it, I think it's pretty good. I mean, it's playable. It's not bad. It's, it's playable. It has a good plot. It's just not good on the details or the personality. It doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. it to me, it seems bland, but without kind of guides or instructions as to how to not make it bland. Online, there is the blog, Hack and Slash blog, which has a great write-up on how to make it more, more personality, how to give it a little more life and a little more edge. Um, I'll link that below. And there's also a bunch of guides you can find on the DM Guild to help you out. So please, don't run this module as written. P please. Your players will thank you. So, Horde of the Dragon Queen, world-ending cults, giant epic things, bad people trying to bring about horrible things. I bet you're wondering, well, are there any other books that deal with that that you recommend? 
I'm glad you asked. There are. Here's a few suggestions as to books that are like Horde of the Dragon and Rise of Tiamat, but to me do it a lot better than that. So the first one is Dark Albion Cults of Chaos. Now Dark Albion is a great book written by the RPG pundit. Dark Albion is an OSR game based on historical England as its setting, and, and the uh, Cults of Chaos book has tools for making your own cults. And that includes creation, their lifestyle, methods, everything you need to make your own cult. And it's all random tables, so you can just generate it or pick and choose or whatever. It just gives you a bunch of ideas to make your own cult and to fit it towards your group. And that is excellent. You don't really need the Dark Albion setting book to use it. You, it's, just, it's just a good campaign starter. You can generate an entire cult plot line just from the book, just from the, the dozens of tables that are in it. So one of my favorite modules that deals with cults and cultists is the Dungeon Crawl Classics module, Sailors on the Starless Sea. So Sailors on the Starless Sea is a level zero adventure, so um, it's meant for starting players for Dungeon Crawl Classics, and it's probably the most well-known one, and that's for a reason. It is an excellently well-written module, it is fun, it has got tons of twists and turns, and it's all about a cult trying to resurrect a, a old cult lord by making sacrifices, and it has beast men and a bunch of crazy stuff. It's really, it's, it's a good module. It's, it's one of the most popular ones for a reason. There's a good reason. Um, there's also The Red Prophet Rises by Malrex. It's very mysterious. I don't know what that means. Uh, and it's for the Golden Glory game, which is a second edition retro clone. Um, I like the, the People of the Bull Cult. And it's, and it's Norse-style sacrifice rites in this game. It's really different, and it's a good read. And if you're looking for online resources for this kind of thing, I'll link below. The blog for Against the Wicked City has a great blog post about cults. And it's it's kind of like, I think of it as an addendum to the Dark Albion cults. I, really, I thought it was really good. So I'm going to link that below. You should check that out, too. If you like the themes in Horde of the Dragon Queen, but you wanted a little more love and a little more bite to it, then you can check out the online resources I shared, or you can try some of these other modules. I mean, all these modules are pretty easily converted to your favorite game system. If that's 5th edition D&D or other, it, it's not really bad. It's about the content in them, and that's what I want you to focus on. Um, since my bookcase summons me, I'm probably going to be going through all the Wizards of the Coast modules and see if there are any... Um, OSR or independent ones modules that are, if not better than it, or just equal to. I think I hear the miss is coming. And I like to pretend to be asleep because I'm Trixie. Good night. Oh. I'm a burrito. Fly coming out of the chrysalis. Oh.